Welcome to OSB Miniature Studio. This week we are painting Panelite Enforcers in a navy and white scheme. For returning viewers, many apologies that it's been a long time since I've uploaded, but I've been away on paternity leave. I'm back now and probably going to stick to my same shambolic schedule of uploading videos as and when. So hey, there's something to look forward to and that's definitely going to draw in loads of new viewers and subscribers. So without further ado, let's kick off. I start off with all of the Enforcer models Xenophil primed and on the Assault Shields I've carefully cut out the viewing glass at the top of the shield with a hobby knife using many small cuts to gently scrape this away and then I leave this open so that I can then put in a clear piece of glass later on. To begin painting the Enforcers I start with Army Painter Speed Paint Dark Wood and I apply this to all the leather areas so their belts the straps to the elbow and knee armour and also any pouches and holsters on the model. I use Army Painter Speed Paint Cloudburst Blue and apply this to all of the main uniform areas, so the trousers and their tunics. This gives the uniforms a base navy colour. Taking Citadel Contrast Black Templar, I apply this to all of the Enforcer's boots, shields, and their main body armour, as well as any armour on the wrists, elbows and knees. When applying this to the shields, it's important to brush down the model so that the paint doesn't pull at the top of the shields. And I ensure to stack these between my wooden cubes so that the paint gravitates downwards whilst they're drying as well. This avoids any strange pooling on the surface of the shield. To paint all of the base metallics on the model, I mix equal parts Army Painter, Night Scales and Gunmetal. Night Scales is a metallic black, so mixing this in with your base metals will give you a darker tone of that. I say I apply this to all of the elements of the model that I'm intending to be metallic, so grenades, weapons and details on the helmet such as the main respirator and the headphones. I also apply this to the metallic areas of the shields such as the central buckles and the framing of the viewing shield. I mix the Army Painter Night Scales in with some Army Painter Tainted Gold and use this to pick out any gold details on the models. I've chosen to paint these elements that are normally painted as headlights on the model and also their belt buckles in this gold colour. Using Vallejo model colour London Grey, I apply this as a base coat to all of the elements that I wish to be painted white. So anywhere where I'm going to apply decals on the model such as the middle and back of the armour and also any of the raised stripes and the central part of the helmets. As a guide, the parts that the official Warhammer paint scheme shows as yellow, I'm painting as white in my paint scheme. I also apply this to knee pads and elbows and also to the eye lenses. Same on the shield, I paint the main circular decal in the middle of the shield and the central stripe. I also apply London Grey to any of the stun concussion grenades on the models as their base colour. Using Army Painter Ash Grey, I then apply a mid-tone highlight to all of these grey painted areas to move them up towards white. Before finishing with some Army Painter Spaceship Exterior as the final white colour. This is a great cool grey colour, so it's like a dirty white rather than a true matte white. I mix in some Army Painter Matte Black in with some Deep Blue to create the first mid-tone highlight for my navy uniforms. I'm looking for a slightly lighter tone than the Cloudburst Blue that I have on there. And for the final highlight, I add some Citadel Rust Grey into the mixture. Create this grey navy final edge highlight colour. I edge highlight all of the black painted boots and armour with first with some Citadel Skaven Blight Dinge before following up with some Citadel Storm Firming Fur for a slightly smaller thinner edge highlight to these same areas. 
The first highlight I applied to all of the leather areas is some Army Painter Oak Wood before following up with some Army Painter Werewolf for, for a final edge highlight and some wear lines to all of the leather areas, adding various scuffs and scratches to the holster and pouches. I give the gold areas a final highlight of pure Army Painter Tainted Gold and I paint a central red line to all of the stun grenades first with some Vallejo model color black red and then a thinner line of Army Painter Dragon Red. I then take Army Painter Speed Paint Gravelord Grey and apply this to all of the main body parts on the weapons and I then highlight all of the metal areas with some neat Army Painter gun metal. Then all of these metallic areas are given a final thin edge highlight using some Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I also apply this to any battle damage that I've added to the Palonite Enforcer armors. I do this with like the tip of a scalpel just to add a few bullet indentations. I then apply the decals from the Enforcer transfer sheet that I want onto the model's chest plates and knee pads. And I do this with just some fresh, clean water, fully submerging the decal in the water with a hobby knife and then pushing it to the edge of my plastic lid of water I've got here. This ensures that the decals are saturated, but if you leave them floating in the water, the decals will separate and inevitably scrunch up. I then apply some neat, clean water to the surface that I wish to slide the decal on, and then picking the decal up with the hobby knife, I then use a clean, damp brush to gently slide it off, and then use that same brush dried off on a piece of kitchen rod to move the decal into place. The decals are then finished with a coat of Army Painter brush-on matte varnish to seal them. I then apply some Magic Wash to the entire model. Magic Wash is equal parts Army Painter Flesh Wash, Army Painter Dark Tone Wash and Lamia Medium. This is a good all round wash, much better than Agret's Earthshade because it adds the warmth of the flesh tone with the grime of the, of the dark tone and the Larmian medium stops it from being too heavy. I then sponge chip all of the black painted armor. So taking some small pieces of a dishwasher sponge torn up on a set of tweezers I dab on some Vallejo Model Air Chrome to all the edges of the armour just to add some realistic wear and tear. This is a particularly good effect on the straight edges of the shield and weapons. Army Painter Matte Black is used to paint on any tactical markings I'm adding to the knee pads of each of the enforcers. I'm using crosses for the subjugators and just a horizontal line for the enforcers and I then add some battle damage chipping to these areas and decals by sponge chipping on some spaceship exterior. The center of each of the eye lenses is given a very thin line of Army Painter Matte White before going in with Army Painter Speed Paint Magic Blue to tint the eyes a glowing blue color. For any scopes or screens on the models, these start off with a base color of Army Painter Hydra Turquoise before coming in with some Army Painter Toxic Mist for a sharp edge highlight. To add the glass back into the Assault Shield visor, I take a mobile phone screen protector, gently cut this up with a sharp scalpel and an old set of hobby nippers. Take care when cutting this, it is glass, so it can be sharp. Make sure to dispose of all the chips carefully afterwards. And using your hobby nippers, you can gradually cut this into the right shape till it snugly fits into the opening on the assault shield. I then glue this in place with some PVA glue before applying a final coat of Citadel Hard Coat to all of the eyes and the glass screens to provide a gloss finish. And with that, the models are complete. Let's move on to the showcase.
Hey, many thanks for staying to the end of the video. If you got this far, it does truly mean a lot to me. And if you've got this far, why don't you leave me a cheeky like or maybe a subscribe if you're not already. It definitely makes me feel better. It doesn't cost you anything. And it stops me questioning why I'm sat in a shed on my own editing and uploading these videos. It shows that someone out there is actually watching this and finding it useful, hopefully. So please leave a comment below. You can also go over to Instagram and follow me there. I try, I will try and update that more regularly as well. I say I'm coming back to hobbying and creating videos following some paternity leave. I have no set schedule for when videos will be released, but I do have a few more videos coming up to end the Necromunda diorama series, and then I'll be into another uh, long-term project, probably a 40K army build looking ahead. So without further ado, all that is left for me to say is you are a wonderful person who is definitely destined for hobby greatness. Many thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Take care.